Hello everyone, welcome back to our day two for our Selenium live training and project. Um, let's get started with the session. So I'm assuming team, like I've asked earlier, you've all watched the first two sessions, the orientation and day one. So I just quickly want to ask from the audience if you have done that. Okay, so can you please let me know? This poll talks about only orientation session, but say yes if you watch the orientation and the day one as well, please. This is the only poll I want to do. Because very critical that I know what you have seen and what you have not so far. I will know the level of your understanding through this. This is not just for the orientation session team, for both orientation and the day one, especially the day one. Please use the poll to answer, not on the chat. All right, great. So team, I'm going to quickly close this and uh, share the result. It's just a quick question that I had. So uh, we've got about 85% of you who have watched it, 15% of you not yet. So please, I request once again for the people who have not watched to go forward with it. If you have to catch up with what we do and how we do, this is very critical. All right. Okay, cool. So let's get started then now that I know how much the audience has really watched. Uh, what we've done in the day one is we put a high level set of requirements or goals that we believe this dream automation project or automation framework can really achieve. And we wanted to see how what kind of features we take and place them into our first beta version that will be very lean, easy to use and uh, can be accepted by many QA organizations and teams globally. So with this regard, what I did is I went ahead and I did a little bit of documentation around it. Not too heavy, but I, I believe it's got some um, uh, possible things. Team, here is the second thing. When you ask me where is the link for day one and what can I do, I cannot spoon feed you guys. I will not spoon feed you. You are getting all the communication, all the emails, watch them and follow the instructions. If you're coming to this training expecting that, oh, Karthik will spoon feed me, he will really handhold me. No, it will not work. You have to follow my instructions. You have to do what we have asked you to do and keep in constant communication. That is the only way you're going to learn things out here, team. All right. So please make sure that you are participating in a good manner and not necessarily lost. Otherwise, at the speed which we will go, you will not be able to catch up very easily. Let me move this window to the next screen. Come on. I'm, I'm moving it, yeah. I'm moving the chat window into a different screen so it doesn't interfere. Okay, so here is what I did with the requirements document. So I'm still calling it as any ought as of now. And um, as we go along, we believe there's a better name, then we will put that name to it. So there are four modules that I put for this application team, primarily the four modules. The first is the implementation. Implementation is basically when we go and set up this application or this framework to execute for any specific client or application under test. Okay, so things like what comes in that I've put them, I'm expanding on them right now. The next one is to get the run ready and we're calling it as setup run. To setup run, that means that we are trying to select as to what we want it uh, to get executed, where it should get executed, when it should get executed and so on. The next module within this framework is going to be execution where the actual test will get executed. And finally, the results will tell us exactly what has happened during that run. Associated with this framework should also have some help documentation and about. About should basically say what is the, what is, I'll just call it again as any or all about and how to 
uh, use it just general guidelines that so that there are certain set expectations for the user it should not be in such a way that the user comes in and says oh i'm not i'm sorry that this framework does not do certain things or we are lacking in certain activities so now implementation is a big uh, activity team okay now if you look at i will talk about this document and i will look at the assistance of the team to take this and put it into a more formal functionality document then we'll be able to invest uh, into some kind of a web development if needed uh, to be able to further take this on so that coordination manoj from my team will be doing along with each of you and we will get a good chance to involve and say uh, you know how we going which direction we going and that will be a great starting point for all of us all right now let's look at implementation team implementation is basically starts with collecting certain details about the application and the test at a high level i'll read this team and i'll try and draw a few diagrams that will be easy for us to understand and further finish the documentation that is ready and this will help us to develop the app uh, framework going forward from day three so what kind of a details do i want to know about the application let's say that we are testing something like interact as an application or even let's say we're testing anything like uh, whatsapp or uh, linkedin or facebook or any medical uh, healthcare or any other industry it should be absolutely industry um, independent so we'll capture the name of the application the url for the live version and the industry that is the first thing that we will enter so the user gets to enter this in some kind of edit field somewhere so this information is captured all right then comes the next more important thing called the module list so any application that we talk about team you all with me you all understanding what we're trying to do out here everyone so we're saying we will talk about the application name okay let's say we talk about interact for example we know this is interact and we give it the url which says interact.com slash app let's say this is the live server where the application will get hosted and then this box will basically say uh, the overall functionality but we can divide the all the activity that a user performs into various pieces of code or modules and each module we want to enter a detail what kind of a details do we want to enter we want to be able to enter the name of the module give it a unique id and a description okay so now how many of you know about the application interact because that way it is easy for us to uh, also relate to a sample exam uh, application while we're building a framework we can always take something new but this application is a lot of functionality that i believe is an excellent case for automation testing so how is your knowledge about the application please Manoj, do you remember from one of our previous sessions where we have an overview of this application of Interact? Maybe we can also we can also share one of those videos uh, with the team. Okay, so sure. Let me explain at a very high level team what this application does. So Interact, if I show you on the home page itself, it'll be it'll be more than sufficient for someone to understand what it does okay okay there you go here is the home page which talks about what this application does all right it is basically a simple messaging app where a trainer is able to broadcast and notify the trainees in any specific training organization or independent trainers it has been built with the fact that we are aware that a lot of these messages bounce back especially when we send emails 
text messages, we update on Facebook or website or Twitter or any other media. Each and every medium that we use has certain challenges that we've observed. So what we wish for the trainees to hear from, what do we wish to hear from the trainees are comments like this. But a lot of times we get things like this. Even now, for example, one of the students asked me, where is the link for day one? So, you know, those things are really hurting the overall training program. The reason is not only are the trainers putting all the effort to conduct these programs, but also the fact that each trainee comes with a dream, with a vision to learn something, be it on a recreational side, be it on a career side, they have goals associated with it. So they've put in their effort, their time and aspirations to learn something that they're not very clear about. So, so far, we're just opening up for a pre-beta. We have not even launched the beta version. So we want any trainer to be able to subscribe and wait for the application to really get launched so they can start using it too. So how does it work? Very simple. The first step is for the institute or admin to set themselves up. Let's say IT eLearn. As IT eLearn, once we register and get approved, we can log in as an administrator. I can add the courses to it, give a course icon to each and every course. Okay, just two, three fields into it. All right. And then we add trainers, the details of username, first name, email, if there's an icon that each trainer has, we could upload that. And we associate that trainer to one or more courses. So we know what courses these trainers are taking. And all this is part of the admin setup team. The last step in this is we add trainees. We enter each trainee out here and again link them to the courses. So our training is primarily built about the courses being the main uh, focus point okay so very simple we have a list of courses that we offer all right as an institute admin i am able to go and set up the courses and say what courses we will take and we have trainers who are associated to those courses and we have a lot of trainees out here in this block who are subscribing to certain courses in it all right now once the setup is done all we do is the trainer is able to log in and send a simple notification saying a subject body course just like a typical emailing system okay like we write an email we then say which course are we writing to so let's say a specific course like SLT okay has uh, let us say about 90 students in it okay the selenium live training let's say we have uft live project going on okay and in this let's say there are about 40 students so manoj is able to send messages to uft and to slt because he's the trainer there that manoj can do it okay now karthik let's say is only for selenium live training he or she is able to send message to just the selenium live training batch okay this way we are able to send a notification which looks just like an email subject body and details about it finally what we do is we add a category to the message and this is an important thing category is basically talking about the type of the message when it comes specifically to trainings, we know that there are different categories of messages. Sometimes we're sharing a web link or we have a question to ask or there's an event that is coming up. We want to invite people, uh, a countdown to a session coming up, all of this. Let's say even there's a change in something. So we change the schedule or how you join the program. So these messages, we should be able to add this category and send it along with it. Once this is done as a trainer, step two, then comes the final step wherein 
a trainee is able to read this message and take an instant action. That message is delivered to the trainee through their email address. It comes directly to their email address. It also comes on their mobile app when they download it from our Play Store currently. We have the Android version ready. And you can get the ping and notification on your mobile app. They can also log in using the credentials to the web browser and access it. Once this is done, then all of us have the op option to be able to work with it. So if I go to playstore.com and search for Interact, in fact, it's already here, just say Interact, you will see the app is already published out here. Here is the URL. Let me put it up in the chat so you all can pick it up from there. You can directly install this, but once we add you to the training list, then you will start getting the notification. So you'll get the username and login and you're able to work with it. So the trainee login details or registration is not available for trainees directly. It has to go through the trainer. OK, so at a high level, that is all about what this application does and so on. All right. So for this, we have the app. So once I log in and I look at things, you will notice a lot of things being done in this application. So this is a trainer login. So let me log in as IT learn. What happened? I think it's in the password and I don't remember the one. OK. <coughs> Sorry. Team. So here are the different notifications that I've been sending across to the team. And let's say I send, click on plus send new notification. I can talk about which team that I'm sending to and I'll ed, attach a uh, note to it and I'll say. So let's say I'm sending it to IT and core team is all of us that who are working with an IT and team, we have it here. Selenium with Java training, this was the one which we finished recently. HP UFT live project is the one Manoj is currently doing. Okay, so this way we have multiple trainings that are currently available to All right, so if I say uh, IT learn core team and just send a um, reminder. So a couple of things that I'll put here to do. And let's say I say something like important. These are the different categories to this message. And I write trainers need to start using the app actively. This is the message. Okay. And I save the message. Since I've logged in as a trainer, the message will get saved. And you will be able to, I'll be able to then say broadcast. Do you notice the different icons that are coming up for each of this feature? This is basically coming out here. Now this is published. So I can log in as a trainee and look at the uh, what update I've sent. Let me quickly ch check my mail to see that I've got it in. Okay, this I need. It should come pretty quickly out into that emails that yes, uh, this has come up. It would just be my email server, which is still uh, trying to fetch that email, I guess. Okay. Do you understand the overview of the application, everyone, and what it is doing? Yes, at high level, you get it. Lot of functionality and lot of great fields, features that can be added, and it's got it's got significant amount of complexity in the workflow also. So that gives a good application for us to really see how much we can really automate. So while we have used this in many of the trainings and projects so far uh, in the last two, three months, I believe this framework that we'll develop, we will take it to a totally new level. All right, everyone. I think it's there in the other email. Okay, there you go. So here is the message that I've sent. 
So trainers need to start using the app actively. So it has come from Karthik at ITLN.com to my personal ID. I've subscribed using this into the overall uh, thing and I get the notification out here. All right. So this is how this application is built right now. Many features that we're working on constantly and we'll continue to add them. Okay. So this will help us to really design and do it with one application in mind and hopefully we should be able to take it to any application. The idea is not to test this application team, just use the frame, uh, this application as a pilot to build a framework. Then we can assign it. So are the trainers and students in the class or the people who want to become trainers? No, they're the belonging to a specific class. So there's a trainer and his or her students. So whoever is teaching is able to communicate. It's right now one way communication, but always the now that the email has come, I can quickly hit reply and write back to Karthik saying, thank you, will do. All right. So this is how the communication hopefully should increase significantly and become more efficient. Okay, right. All right, team, let's move back to our uh, program. So we're talking about this kind of a structure. Now, how do we really make this happen, team? At a high level, there is a specific set of uh, outline. Again, framework as a word, I'll have to use it too often. So as to what technology, how will this work? Where will we write all of this information? Are we going to put that in a Excel sheet or an XML? Or how do we enter this information? Let's say I'm saying that details about the application, about the modules, writing test cases, writing test steps, associating keywords to it, identify elements, test data, expected result, actual result, time taken, actual result and so on. All of these things are there. Let me call this a screenshot. Screenshot and maybe error details. Now you'll see how much of complexity can be achieved in this framework. It's really gonna get complicated. With minimum features itself, it's got to be a heavy product. Guys, come on. So how do we do it? We have multiple ways. Let's talk about just implementation. Team. Where? What is implementation? Can someone tell me again? When I say implementation of this ENIOT, which is the name of the framework that we're thinking of right now, what are we saying? I want you all to interact, please. If, you're, uh, if you would like to raise your hand and speak, please do so. I would love to unmute you. Uh, implementation is not to write the code and team feel free to tell what you have in mind because that is the only way we'll be able to make sure we understand. Is the marketing not really? It's not marketing, it's not to write the code. Implementation means to create the framework, no. All those modules we have to build anyway. Implementing goals in reality, no. Approaching, no. Put requirement in action to certain extent close. The launch, no. See, I'm glad I asked this. Planning, no. Planning, yes, to certain extent, but not totally. So, okay, to perform requirement gathering analysis of design, no, 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 okay. Now, this is how it is, team. Let us assume that this product called any art is ready as a package, okay. This is as a package, it is ready, it is ready for launch. It has been developed like a hybrid framework. 
it has keyword driven data driven all these capabilities excellent reporting and all that let us say client for example a client like um, um what can i say give me some names of clients team the reason i'm asking this even this we will confuse a lot of our students can get confused give me a name of a client okay like amazon for example yes who else can be a client Google, yeah, Verizon, Microsoft, IT Elon can be a client, Interact can be a client, right? Even a small company could be Blue Cross, Blue Shield, all right, Anthem, Make My Trip, all of this could be clients. Now, let us say that one company, for example, uh, Verizon Wireless, okay? They have a QA team of one QA team. I'm saying in the QA organization, there could be about 200, 300 people distributed across. But one QA team has, let's say, 50 members in it. All right. And there are about, there's a QA manager. There's a QA lead. Uh, there are three QA leads. Okay. Now, this application, any odd, they came to know that we can try using that application. So when they get access to this application and yes, we can also do it for things like Walgreens and so on. And they say, hey, let's try and implement it. So they need to set it up in such a way that they can use it. So that initial setup or implementing it for the project for their requirement is what I'm talking about as implementation. Only after implementation are they able to run the framework. Till then they cannot run it. Now you understand team, what is implementation? Okay, so to implement, how will they do it? How will they implement it? Now, I can simply create a new sheet out here. It's also configuration, yes. Now, the reason I'm saying a bigger word than configuration is, uh, actually, it's not a bad word. We, we can also call it as configuration. The reason I'm saying is implementing because it is going to go in deep, spend a lot of time and effort in writing all the details. Okay. So the first thing I said that we may require are these. This is not a comprehensive list team, and this is where each of you will be able to help me and provide more information. Okay, so let's say these are the three things. Application under test name. Okay, we want to collect this. <clears throat> we want to collect the URL and we want to collect the industry. Now, what kind of a fields will this be? What kind of a fields will we collect it into? Basically, the three fields team, three sets of information that we need to collect. And this is regarding the application and a test. Okay, so I will insert one here and I'll call this as AUT details. This is the name of what the team will first do and <coughs> execute. All the whole framework and what we're trying to do will become very, very clear once we do this today session. Okay. So here are the different fields that the user should be entering information. And See what I'm trying to do out here, team. How do I vertically align this? Horizontal aligning is there. Where is vertical alignment? View. Format. Align. 
metal okay <coughs> team i'm spending a lot of time on these topics because this is where things will become easy for us okay now these are the different field team that we have in this these are all grayed out these are there as field names someone has to go and enter this could be even a web based application where a user comes and enters information all right this could be totally a web based application or it could be an excel also or it could be in some sort of an xml so the team which we were talking for example verizon when they're implementing where will they put all this information first regarding the application and a test then they will have to fill the detail about modules so this i'll rename it as this is aut right now how am i putting a team into an excel sheet right next i will have to put this into some kind of other way that is easy for people to enter modules now when entering modules what happens is this information will already come from here whatever we entered here will get will come to uh, will come in so once this is done we will have two buttons one is submit other is cancel all right so this should get created as soon as a user puts this information out here let's say submit is a green button and cancel is an orange button once the details are entered user can submit or cancel it now you're understanding team what we're trying to do and how we're trying to achieve things out here is it getting clear for everyone okay next comes the modules so for this application let us say that we are talking about interact again okay and url for the live version is www.interact.com/app industry is a communication tool or industry or type so some other application some other user will enter some other information here now this information is done when they submit it they get another button out here similarly now add modules and they will have to go in here and say which module to they want to add duplicate this delete this in the adding of modules does the user need to again submit or cancel details about this application no why because they have already added it so i don't need this okay but i need to be able to add one module at a time and this is also grayed out because we filled it up so no longer user has the ability to fill those information they cannot change but what they can do is they can edit if they want they'll say you know what edit application under test overview details that if they wish to do they should be able to add not otherwise all right how do we then add modules now to add modules very similar to this i'm going to put information here add a module what is the information that i want to collect is the requirements i want to collect module name module id module description so this is more like now you'll understand what i'm doing ui slash ux for any or implementation if we are implementing it for any project client application what do we do this is the ui that we are looking at is it a finalized one not necessarily is it something we are working on yes it's a work in progress for us 
okay so here module name okay this will be in white why because not yet filled module id should be auto generated like you know some name or let the user enter it this is the kind of decision making that we should take as a team should it be auto generated or is it okay to leave it as is what else is there that we wanted module description we someone wants to write some details about module description <coughs> now module description could be a little longer one so this i will expand it now okay See the reason I left it as auto-generated, all of this uh, auto-generated as a question mark is we know that we still have the choice. Now what I can do, I can say submit or cancel. It's like a save or cancel. Okay. Now what happens? Module will get added. To. All right. Is it getting clear? So we are dividing the entire application into components the smallest component that you will notice <coughs> is a test step is a step that a user performs okay many test steps if we put them together what will it become team when we add multiple test steps to put them together test steps smallest you uh, activity that a user performs it becomes a when you add multiple test steps together what does it become come on guys it becomes a test case test suite is a bigger one okay this becomes one test case team so these are steps and now this becomes one test case so multiple test cases like this you put them together and that becomes a module so all of these are more the whole thing is a module it will belong to a module they have to belong to certain module any test case okay each of these are test cases and each of these are test steps you understand so we are adding a module then we can add test cases to that module we can at the same time also add test steps to it clear now let's talk about the next one so see simply we're designing this framework <coughs> or usage now we'll talk about it. let's talk about a module name with an interact let's say trainer is a module okay so as soon as we add these details they will have to get reflected somewhere i am creating a ui ux what is a ui ux team everyone tell me please this is going to be a great learning experience overall you will learn a lot about product development apart from how we do testing automation frameworks and build it using selenium there's a lot that we're going to do team what is ui ux ui is user interface it is how the u uh, user is looking at each of the components and being able to work with it ux is user what is ux guys experience user experience is basically talking about the feel good factor how is the user's experience are they liking it is it very easy to navigate for example when we launched the initial versions of U uh, interact the user ui was there user experience was not that great and we worked very hard to generate and make it better so the ui is the front end this is the ui this becomes the front end for any application where can this front end be 
what format can a front end be team yes you're right it can be on a website exactly where else can be it can be on a mobile app absolutely any application not ours it can be in HTML browser it can be on a desktop too now this application fresh paint that I'm using right now to draw this is it a web based application or a desktop based application This fresh paint that I'm using to draw, is it a web-based or a desktop? I'm surprised to see a lot of answers. Half of you, more than half of you are saying web-based, some of you are saying desktop. It is a desktop team. It is not, I'm, anything I open on a browser becomes web-based. Anything I open in my system, which is installed on my system, is a desktop application. All right, it is absolutely fine to have a wrong answer. But only then do we realize there's something correct. Okay. <clears throat> is this Google web-based? Yes. When you go to google.com, it is web-based. Now, is Google Drive web-based? Yes, it is. Unless I install it locally on my machine and I don't need internet access to use it, it, becomes, it can become a simple uh, desktop application. Okay. Now, this is front-end. Now, what is back-end then? What is, what is the back end of an application? This is going to be so interesting for each of us to refresh our basics and fundamentals of how any application work. It is our database. Finally, whatever a user does, on the application has to get stored somewhere. Let us say I add a trainer in Interact or I add a trainee. Okay. Or I add a profile picture. Where will it go and get stored? In some storage database. What could it be? It could be a actual database like MySQL or Oracle or anything. It can also be as a simple Excel file. It can be as an XML. It can be a flat file, even a text file. It can store in from it can be images and so on. All that we are doing in the front end has to have some kind of an interaction which is two way. Let's say I log in. As soon as I log in to interact how does this application know what profile picture to get, what courses I'm linked with, what is my name and so on. I just put my username and password, but it gets all those things. It gives me the ability to look at the notifications, correct? So all this information is there in a database. And in between is our main programming layer, our logical layer or our middle tier where all the features, all the functionality, the business logics, everything is put in here. What happens? So if it gives you raw database, it will look like a simple file like this. It look like a data file like this. Okay. But this, the program understands how to present it and that becomes a presentable way that the user can read it. Now, when you talk about in, uh, Gmail, for example, all that information that you're accessing regarding your emails, contacts, and so on is stored in a database. Because of that middle layer, which is your basic logic layer or your business layer, it says how it should be presented. That becomes the UI. Now, is any art an application? Is any art an application? Any art is the uh, pseudo name that we have given to that automation framework that we're building, right? It is an auto application. So for this application, I need to be able to understand the technology that I use. Technology is this now.
We'll just call this simple document as any ought technology architecture. So even if I talk about simple three things, there could be multiple, multi, multi-layered, four-tiered, three-tiered architecture. What you've seen this image earlier is a three-tier architecture. That is typically how a lot of applications get built. Then there are things like web services and other things that can get added, APIs and so on. And it becomes a four-tiered or a multi multi-tiered architecture. Okay. So for the UI, what do we use? Should it be web-based? Can it be desktop-based? Hey, I can also put this in Excel, right? So far, this is what we used to build frameworks. We said whatever we want, all this information, we'll write it into a simple Excel sheet. And that Excel sheet will used to look something like this. So the previous um, session that we did, this is how I'll write test cases. This is how I'll write test steps associated with it. Test data is here. Page objects here, here. Keywords are here. Okay. Even this is a UI team. Now, as a backend database, I'll call this as backend. Where can I put it? Like I said, I can use MySQL. We can use Oracle. We can use any uh, database or it can be XML, Excel and flat files like a text file and so on. <clears throat> okay. So there are so many databases that we could use. <clears throat> if a UI is good, <clears throat> then this is whatever format is there, right? It will automatically get it and present it to us correctly. It's the presentation layer for us. <clears throat> now, the <clears throat> programming layer <clears throat> or the logic, business logic layer. What will we use to build this? <clears throat> What are we using out here? What are we using here, team? Business logic? Yes. So if I were to build a web-based or HTML, I can use PHP. I can use C Sharp, Ruby on Rails. I can use Java, Python, any of these technologies will help us to build this application overall, which shows how the UI will look, how the whole business logic is presented and a programming layer and also the backend. But in this case, what we are doing, we are using Selenium Web Driver with Core Java. This is what we have chosen to use. Why? Because the core functionality of the application is to be able to interact with the web browser and that's why web driver. Now, with these three points there, let us see what skill do we have in the team. Am I going to talk about how we build a web-based application, desktop, HTML programming, CSS, PHP and so on for this? All we use, let's say, HTML, PHP, CSS, JavaScript, etc. There's so many technologies that we could use, even for the web-based. Now, how many of you know are experts at web-based application development? And is that the intent of our training program here? No, it is not, correct? It is not our intent right now to master. But does any art require a web-based or a desktop-based UI? Yes. So what I'm saying is, let us start small with a simple UI that we can do with our current skill. In the second version, we can transform or 
rebuild using a web based or rebuild for a web based or desktop based uh, UI slash user experience. You understand team what and how we are trying to do things now? Each of you? These are the points that are there for the UI for any art. This is for the automation, any automation, automation frame, any art framework. That is what we're trying to do. All right. Now we don't have this team. So let us start with a simple UI. How can we do that? You know what? We are used to our Excel. For this specific beta version, my recommendation is since we don't have that skill or ability within us, we will use a simple Microsoft Excel to collect information later move it to a web-based approach or desktop web slash desktop based. You understand the team? The direction we're taking, we need to have a clear defined scope of what we can achieve. Now for the business logic, we have chosen Selenium web driver so we can interact with a web based application using the DOM slash HTML through our web driver technology. This is what we said we will use. Our whole programming we can do using Code Java. Why not JUnit or TestNG? TestNG is a starting basic level of simple unit frame, unit test frameworks. Code Java scope is endless. Now we can also use C sharp. That's not a problem. Team. So to build our business logic for our application, we will use Code Java to whatever extent we want, we can take it. So once we go in this direction, we will cross over JUnit or TestNG. All right. So we're going even more bigger than this JUnit or TestNG. Again, for a database at the back end, how this information will get stored. My recommendation again is the same thing like this. MS Excel as of now, but later move it to a much faster, efficient database. Because this database is not just here. It can be as Jira. It can be our HP, ALM, Bugzilla, and any other test management tools that we could put out here. Okay. So that is the reason I'm saying, let me go ahead and build this like a UI, how it will look and so on. So people can start entering the information. So this is how each and every module will get entered. Okay. So when a module gets entered, some data will get created somewhere, right? So I will say, this is modules, uh, UI UX, right? Now, I'll create a new sheet. And this, any odd backend database. So let us assume that this application will get created where a user is able to go in and add an application and a test, add a module to it and so on. Okay. So when this is done, you will see a list of all application and test details. You will then see also another one which is going to be module list 
list of all modules then we will see the test cases so application and uh, test details are what are those three things that we've capturing here aut url for live version industry these are the three things i will copy the same things in here but i'll transpose it paste special paste transpose so these are the three columns what happened paste special paste transpose copy and paste special paste transpose come on okay that's fine uh, just three things right aut name url for live version and industry so i'll, I'll do it myself okay Now, in this, there's only one field key, I mean, one row, because that is what we've learned there. But there'll be other things like date created, okay, and um, owner, or some kind of a details about it. So, login details of the user. All of this, we should be able to provide access to the users to be able to work on this, okay. Like I said, the sky is the limit to what we can achieve in this thing. We want to be able to do that something that is truly viable. It will come out finally as a version and we will do a very agile based development. We will not go big waterfall model where everything is coming at one time. So we'll have to break it down into requirements. So for this, I'll say interrupt all those details that are there will get copied here now. You all understand team? You have good clarity of what we're doing now? So login details, owner, date created, all of this will be extensions that we will keep adding as we go along. Okay. So this is our one set of data. Then comes our module list. For module list, we have names of the different modules. What are the different modules we have? And what is the description and so on? How many rows will be there in this one? How many rows will be there in this? Three columns. But how many rows? Depends upon test cases, actually depends upon the application itself. Now, if you look at Interact as an application, if you go to the main page, home page, we can talk about simply very easily admin as one module, trainers as one module, trainees as one module, right? Right. So those soft features, which is the non-functional features, like how many characters can be there in each field and what kind of characters are allowed and all these non-functional features, which talks about the uh, giving it a better definition of how that is how we will go about developing. Once we finish with this, then it will be easy because the focus that I want to really work on team is this business logic. This is going to be our core. Okay, I don't want to focus on UI because this we will get an expert team to work on it. Even the back end, even this we will get a good team to work on it. But our business logic is what each of us we will have to focus a lot on. Okay, so module name, let's say we're saying trainer module. Okay, within a module, you can further break it down into sub modules. All right, now. Trainer is a module, trainee is a module, and let's say uh, admin is another module. And we can give IDs for it. How some kind of a form, either it is drop down that the user can select, or it has to be in such a way that the user is able to enter the information. Okay, interact underscore uh, trainer. 
ओके इंटरफ्ट अंडरस्कोर ट्रेनिंग आई एफ्ट अंडरस्कोर एडम अ इजी वे फॉर अस टू डिस्टिंग्विश व्हाट इट इज एंड सिंस इट्स अ मॉड्यूल इट्स ऑलवेज गुड वन सेकंड टीम sorry about that it's always a good option to start it with some other character like let's say i'm saying mod underscore interact and so on anything that we see team it should be easy for us to look at and say oh, okay this is a module oh, all right this is a feature this is a test case and so on that is the reason it becomes very important visitor can be a module okay you could have a module specifically for the ui ux all right you can have a general stuff module um what else can you have you can have many modules within it you can also have sub modules but we'll not take it so deep for this version maybe as we keep going you'll realize that yeah you know what we need sub modules also the point is to make it very simple if we focus on the vision the goal that we are setting it should be simple easy yet powerful simple easy and powerful for what not just usage for implementation it should be easy for setup of run it should be easy it should be easy to execute and it should be simple easy and powerful also for the reports that we get all of this should fit into it now just as a simple example we could have loaded interact with so many more features uh that you know who opened who didn't open this that there's so much that we could do but we do not want to overkill it look at how whatsapp became so successful team the reason i believe strongly that whatsapp actually achieved success is because it solved one issue one challenge it said since we have smartphones it should be easy for people to be able to send text message to each other that's it using the data plan using the wifi access rather than using the regular text messages that come through our um, wireless carrier right so then they said you know what they should also be able to add groups they should be able to send um, uh, pictures or videos or contacts slowly the feature started getting added but the core of that functionality was to be able to interact and once it caught on it became very popular because of that okay so here is a module list now let's talk about test case list for test case list i said that we need to have lot of information for it okay now in this test case the certain information that i said is all of this all right some of this will go into the test step like here all of this data control x when we write a test step all of this can be present but for a test case let's look at core so i'll just do the test case for today team and i'll stop and from day 3 we'll start doing building it slowly and i want to be able to distribute some activity to each of you so here the first thing is select the module module id because every test case should belong to a module and then i want a test case id for it then we want all of these details test case name and description tc i'll just say tc name tc name tc description so let us talk about for example uh, one of the module so only from this modules should the user be able to select this should ideally be a drop down like a a drop down list so user should be able to select only from this <laughs> now under the module id trainer i could have multiple test cases test case like login okay trainer login simple login so i'll just put this here that's the test case name simple user login all right then i can say that verify 
uh, credentials verify uh, let's say name and details oops I have to put it here I'll just say UI it's a UI based test case test case ID should be something different now see now module interact so and so right now I should be able to say something like this test case underscore I am or we could leave that so should we have a hard and fast rule on the naming convention or should we give that that ability to the user is important thing so see now it's a longer name altogether test case interact trainer login 001 but it tells me very clearly that it is test case for the interact application trainer is the module login is the test case 001 is the test case id now within the login itself i could have login and verify okay login and confirm so here since it's still about login i'll call it as 002 uh, now we could add a course why am i writing here i'll write it here we could add course we could add trainer add training at a high level can you think of anything else team no test case expected result will not come to yet because that will come at a test step level but from a test cases what else can we talk about let's say add course we are saying we can also edit course right the user can also be able to edit a course and this list will keep on going to edit course and so on okay and for each of this this is trainer this one is trainee all right one and there can be dozens and dozens of test cases just for the trainer module okay so and this list will keep going this is another database okay actually this is all coming under admin module team it's not coming under trainer module you're right the reason being they cannot add and so on trainer can only be able to uh, send miss notifications this is under admin module absolutely right all these features the for the trainer we'll have something else and this is just the list of test cases now we will have another database the good thing about writing it this way is the fact that we can go about showing this to any development team be it for web or database backend and so on and they will be able to easily understand what we're doing and translate that into proper uh, application overall all right now so many questions that we will come across each and every point in this whole development cycle now i'm seeing some of them for example do we need any approval to add trainee from a functionality of the application of interact our uh, admin will be adding trainees so they they don't need approval but they have to know that they have permission to send email so there's a checkbox so if i log in as a trainee tomorrow uh, as admin i'll show you that in the next session add trainer may come so design the name for test case yes so like i've said that who created this application who added the modules who added the test cases and test steps this is a lot of features and additional functionality that we can put maybe not yet <clears throat> i'm just gonna 
leave that portion for now. Team. I want to handle the user aspect a little differently. I, we should be able to build an application that very easily works. Start with, and then all this, the mandatory features I want to be able to say, let's try and focus. And all is great to have additional features we'll keep adding as we go along. All right. Any questions, team, on this? Now you're getting a clarity of what is coming up for us. So our layer in which we are talking the business logic should be able to understand this UI and perform, prepare for test run according to this and business logic. All of this that we are doing, okay, is this is again for implementation. Back end. For test run, we will have something different altogether. For reports, we may have something different. Okay. Okay, let's see. Let's hear some questions now, team. Sorry to bother you. Do we learn data driven hybrid and page audit model and test ng by the end of the course? Can we be able to face interviews completely in these topics? I think we're going way beyond it. We will start with it, but we'll go way beyond. However, I want each and every one to participate by watching some of the tutorials that are there in these areas. So, because we are taking it to a different level altogether from now. Uh, can you upload this Excel sheet in IT Healer? So, team, you'll have to bear with me for file access. It's going to be crazy because there are dozens of people. I don't want to keep sending daily files and so on, but I still want you all to collaborate. The reason I have Manoj also in this session is because I believe that uh, we will have to give you team accesses. We may have to put you into a group of teams so you can start working together and start helping me build along with me. because just one developer or automation engineer like myself it's going to take a lot of time collaborating with each of you and you helping me build it that will be great so we need to create this manual test case documentation every time so dishant yes we need to because uh, even if you want to automate any application you still have to do the same so that will not go away unless you have a layer which is able to read the existing UI of like say Jira or Bugzilla or wherever these sheets are present, this information is present and be able to do it accordingly. Okay, but still there will be a lot of additions that you have to do to make it automation friendly. Do we need any registration module for visitor or guest to become a trainee? So that is the application, interact application question. Um, right now, we're not opening it up for trainees team directly. We're just asking trainers. Once trainers log in, they get access. They are able to add the trainees. And once we have tested this thing as the next feature, the trainees will be able to register it, register themselves at their end and invite the trainers too. What will be needed for me to prepare for next class as I'm new for Selenium? Okay, so guys, I don't know how I will continue to give you the same information over and over again, but I have to. So let me see. I think it is there in the first video that I've spoken about which ones to watch. Manoj, you have the list of the basics, right? That we wanted as a prerequisite that we wanted team to have. Yes, Karthik, yeah, I have. What is this SLP session now, Manoj? Is it a different session? <coughs> uh, yes, Karthik, uh, that uh, Selenium Live project. I think we we try to combine both of them into this, right? Uh, no, actually, that is a different link. Okay, then there's definitely confusion because this is what we should be doing as both together rather than one independent. Uh, let me talk to you after, after this in another two minutes and then we will uh, check on that. Okay, maybe you can log off and log into that and uh, or is it on the same link uh, account? It is in the same account, yeah. Okay, so all right, give me two minutes. I'll try and quickly wind this up. So Manoj, please do send the prerequisites that we expect people to watch. What I want everyone to be comfortable are three topics team, at least basic Selenium element identification. How do we identify elements? 
uh, second is the core concepts of web driver and third is some core java basics and how some of these automation frameworks work on it no problem i understand uh, because communication is very important and once i add you all to interact i should be able to write regularly to you all right team so next session is not next week i'm totally out on a complete on a uh, corporate training next week so i'm not available team from 8th to 12th and this one week is the time that i want to give the ability for everyone to catch up on what is needed to get prepared and we will start going very very actively from 15th onwards in the meanwhile i'll continue to work on this sheet and i'll try and uh, show what i had in mind so we don't waste too much time building it in the class from day three okay the structure for each of this i will start building it uh yes there's one document that my team wanted uh to uh, share with you all about the pricing details because a lot of people have not um, got a chance to join so i'm going to put it up here I believe there's a discount coupon that's also created, which is valid till the 7th of August. I'm going to put it up here. Oh, it doesn't show everything. Uh, okay, I'll put it as two messages. This is the normal regular pricing that is there. So for the ones who have not yet joined and I have some questions, uh, it doesn't come friendly. I'll get it emailed to you, team. I'll have my team email it. But what you see on the screen is the same thing. Is it the same time, team? It should be around 6.30, not 7 p.m. Only for these two sessions, I requested for 7 p.m. Otherwise, we want to do it at 6.30. We have a lot of videos on element identification and Selenium WebDriver basics. Even if you're not a premium member yet, a lot of these videos are available for free. Timing, prerequisites, how to join, how we will try and divide you all into different teams how we will go about uh, uh, sharing all the content that we build how will will we be able to do something like a continuous build and so on we'll keep guiding you through the emails in the coming week team all right everyone that's it from my side for now and i will uh, catch up with you all uh, in the day three uh, which will start from the 15th of August. Okay. Thank you all. Thank you then. Bye. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back soon. I'll put this one also just in case. Thanks all. Bye then. Thanks Manoj.